The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the tabi'een and the atba tabi'een, those men and women who were around, who surrounded, who supported, who followed, who listened, who obeyed, who loved, who sacrificed for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were the strangers. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, this religion, it began as a stranger. Sayaudu li gariban. Fatuba li guraba. Fatuba li guraba. Fatuba li guraba. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, this religion, this deen, in the beginning it came as a stranger. And it will return again as a stranger. So welcome. Glad tidings to the strangers. We are the strangers. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was well known to his people, he was known, Al-Ameen, Sadiq al-Masdur, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They knew he was Muhammad ibn Abdullah, and they knew he was Al-Ameen, and they knew that he was truthful. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him as a prophet and a messenger and commissioned him with this Qur'an and ordered them to follow him and to listen to this word and to give up the idols and to obey Allah and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they thought he was saying something strange. And he said to them, by their names, O oh, Quraysh, you know me. If I told you there was a army behind this mountain coming here to destroy you, would you believe me? They said, yes, we will believe you. Then I'm telling you that I'm the messenger of Allah and you have the obligation to obey me. Their response was that still, he's saying something strange. And so the Prophet ﷺ, who was respected, who was trusted, who was loved, who was known by his people, even his uncles, that day he became a stranger. And Umar ibn al-Khattab, the patriot, the patriot among the Arabs, among the Quraysh, the man who was willing to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just because of his feeling of qawmiyah, he was willing. But on that day that he went to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he too became a stranger. That very day. I work holidays, I work Saturday, I work Sunday, I work double shift, I work any time. But Jum'ah, Allah's time. See you. They said, what happened to Muhammad? A couple of months later, Muhammad, he got the full beard. Now Muhammad got a lihya. I said, Muhammad, what happened to you? You looking like uh, Osama bin Laden. You looking like these uh, Qaeda guys. 
What's going on with you, Muhammad? You could become extremist. Muhammad said, no, I did not become extremist, and I don't belong to any group like that. This is the sunnah of the Prophet And if you don't like it, I don't care. We must be willing to be strangers. And when we become strangers, it's going to affect our livelihood. It will cause people to misunderstand you. It will make you sometimes even doubt yourself. Why I lose my friends? How come my wife, she want a divorce? Because she's telling me I'm becoming extreme. Or, in the case of the sister, she doesn't cover herself. She's wearing lipstick in the street. She's putting perfume on. She's working among the kuffar. And her husband is like her. And one day, she wake up and she puts on niqab. And she puts her full clothes on. No more lipstick. No more perfume. She doesn't talk to the men. She's not working anymore because she understands to keep her higher, to keep herself. She stays home and takes care of her home. And her husband says, what's happened to you? She says, yesterday I read an ayah in the Quran. I read the hadith from the Prophet and it made me cry to think about my religion and I'm not doing that no more. And so he said, then I don't want you. You have become extreme. So she has now become stranger. Alhamdulillah. If he leave her, we ask Allah to give her another stranger. To give her someone else who is also a stranger because strangers belong with strangers. O oh, Muslim brothers and sisters, you and I, we should want to be strangers. We should want to be a part of the return of the strangers. And we should realize that no matter what the non-Muslims do, no matter what they try to do to blow out and extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by blowing with their mouths, meaning their television, their cinema, their newspapers, their books, their radio, whatever they do against Islam, the lies, the distortion, the misconception, whatever they do to try to wipe out Islam, they will never wipe Islam out because Allah Allah will perfect his light and he will perfect it through the strangers we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make you an eye of the strangers we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give our sons and daughters love for the strangers we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our sons and daughters who have taken off their clothes and out in the Jahiliya world who are selling drugs, who are in the clubs, who have went astray, we ask Allah they will come back to become strangers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Muslims who is in this masjid this, e this evening, the men who are here in this masjid, that they will come back to this masjid not tomorrow evening, but in the morning for the Fajr prayer, so they can pray with the strangers. Because when the Muslims in Palestine, when the Muslims in Afghanistan, when the Muslims in Somalia, when the Muslims in Shishan, when the Muslims in Egypt, when the Muslims in Morocco, when the Muslims in Algeria, when the Muslims, wherever they are, when they come out and begin to pray in the masjid as strangers, then Allah will give their earth back to them, their ilk back to them, their kuwa back to them, because Islam then will be back. But you should not ask for the reward of the strangers if you're not acting like the strangers.